Hello, physical systems class. I'm in my PJs today and it doesn't bother me at all. So um, what I have here is an accelerometer. Yes, it looks like uh, headphones jotted onto a phone, which is hanging from a piece of cardboard, some purple lines on it, but it's actually an accelerometer. What this thing does is detect something called acceleration, which is what we're learning today. So we spent some time learning about uh, distance and then speed, how to calculate speed. We're going to have one more thing about kinematics is we're going to learn something, something about something called acceleration. Um, so to learn what acceleration is, let's just look at this thing. This thing is built to detect acceleration. And when it detects acceleration, it'll swing. How much acceleration that actually happens? Well, the more it swing, the bigger the swing, the bigger the acceleration. So I'm just going to, now you guys got a good look at it. I'm going to back up a little bit and I'm going to walk from here to the end of that door. And I want you guys just to pay attention to what I'm doing, pay attention to, and pay attention to what the, acceler or the accelerometer is doing. Remember, when this thing swings, it's detecting a change in acceleration. Uh, so right now it's not swinging at all, which means there is zero acceleration exerted in the forward and backward direction. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start walking, then I'm gonna stop walking. And so there's three periods that's going to be happening here. The first is right now I'm stopped. Then I'm going to be walking. That's the second period. The third period is going to be me stopping again. And so I want you to watch at what points make this accelerometer swing. Um, and of course, I have to be very careful because I don't want to keep a constant velocity. I don't want to um, be changing my velocity a whole lot um, as I'm walking because I want this thing to work right. So, Go ahead and observe what the accelerometer is doing. So I don't have very far to walk, but hopefully you saw, looked at when I'm swinging. I'll do that one more time and go this way this time. Again, just watch at which, which points the accelerometer is swinging. So you might have noticed that right when I started walking, uh, the accelerometer started swinging. Um, and yes, accelerometers are really easy to make. This is just a phone cooked, connected to a phone jack, which is threaded through a piece of cardboard with some lines on it. Okay, so accelerometers are really easy to make. Um, what 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 is acceleration exactly? Uh, so we talked about distance and position, and then uh, something called velocity which is speed with a direction. And now there's acceleration. So uh, acceleration is a change in velocity. And we can think of velocity as a change in position. If your position is changing over a set period of time, that you, will have, you would have some velocity. And if your velocity is changing, you would have some acceleration. So let's just kind of think back to what, this accelerometer is doing here. So this accelerometer, when it could detect a change in velocity, it would start swinging. Now, if you think about the word acceleration and you kind of think, picture yourself in a car, because um, a lot of us experience acceleration at, inside cars or vehicles or planes or whatever, because we tend to gain a lot more velocity when we're driving than when we're just out walking or jogging. But just think about for a second how you feel motion. Um, you might think that when you're in a speeding car, you can feel yourself moving forward, but really you're not feeling the forward motion. What you're feeling is changes in acceleration. If you think about driving at a constant speed, like say you're going seven, mi seven miles an hour down the highway, or you're coming to an abrupt stop, or if somebody stepped on the pedal, the gas pedal, well, in which of those situations are you more likely to feel a lot of motion or a big jolt. We well, feel those big jolts whenever you come to an abrupt stop or when you're uh, picking up speed very fast. Um, that's the acceleration. Acceleration, again, is change in velocity. So when you feel motion, it's because you're feeling a change in velocity. If you think about a very smooth ride, like if a car is heading straight on a smooth road, no bumps on the road, constant speed, you really wouldn't feel that much. You might feel the slightest bit of bumps, or if you 
look outside, your mind is trying to trick you, but really your body's not feeling that chain of motion. It's when you come to an abrupt stop or go really quickly. Same way with my demonstration over there. When I start walking, this thing would start swinging. And if I, would, if I could stay in constant motion for a long period of time, probably more than six feet of walking distance, this swing would eventually come to a stop maybe in the middle or just slightly to the, to the left or right. And when I stopped, it also made it swing again. Um, here, let me show you something else. So we have this, I have this simulation here and I'll leave, leave the link to this simulation in uh, the description of this video if you wanna look at it. Um, but really what's gonna happen is this girl is gonna drop this ball and we have two different graphs here. There's a distance versus time graph and a velocity versus time graph. Now you guys have seen, if you're taking class with me, you've worked with distance versus time graphs. You haven't seen velocity versus time. So um, what do you think is going to happen here? Uh, I think intuitively, you know the distance is going to change because the ball is going to fall straight down. But velocity, what's going to happen there? Is the velocity going to stay a constant uh, velocity? Or is it going to go up or down as the ball falls down? So let's find out. Let's run the simulation and pay attention. All right, so obviously that was in slow motion. Let's run it one more time to look at it. Oh, I messed up there. There we go. All right, so as the ball falls down, uh, if we just look at the black dots on the left, we see that between each space, the spacing gets bigger and bigger. And if you're watching carefully, the timing between when each black dot was drawn um, was actually the same amount of time. So, and if we look over here in these graphs, um, between each of these black dots, there's a difference of one second. So it's really hard to see, but just in our hand, there's like a one second difference. But then as the time goes on, the ball goes farther and farther for each second. And remember we said, velocity equals meet, uh, uh, distance divided by time. So if it's covering a longer distance in the same amount of time, that means its speed must be increasing. And if you watched my previous video, you know that I, I talked about the, this, these position versus time graphs. We, I told you that when it's curved like this, we would get back to it later. And well, we're getting back to it now. We noticed that the position versus time graph is curved. The distance is increasing, even though you might think it's, say it's decreasing. You can call down positive as, just as well as you can call up positive. Anyway, the, just the, uh, this, the slope of this line is constantly increasing. Let's look at the velocity versus time graph now. And we'll see that it's a straight line. Um, and remember one of the questions I asked you, was well, it gonna be constant speed or is the speed gonna be changing? And you might be tempted to say constant speed because on a position versus time graph, if this was position versus time, we would, we would, a straight line would be constant speed, but this is velocity versus time. So velocity is on the y-axis. Since velocity is on the y-axis, as every second goes by, the velocity goes up. And we said, remember, we said acceleration is a change in velocity. So the, this, rep, this shows us that as this ball is falling down, it's accelerating. Um, and this is not just, uh, dropping a ball, any object dro dropped on the earth will accelerate. That's, this is called free fall. Um, and it's something that we can do outside of a simulation um, because the gravitational field is everywhere. The earth's gravity will accelerate any object uh, falling toward the ground. We call that gravitational acceleration. Um, and if you don't believe me, I'll show you in just a second. Um, but first, let me just explain that you guys will be using something very similar to this simulation today. It'll be a little more sophisticated. This one's a little bit better for video purposes because all the fonts and stuff are nice and big. But let me show you one last demonstration on acceleration. All right. For my last simulation or demonstration, I have a motion tracker, which is tracking the position of this uh, kitty that I'm not too fond of. Kind of has a weird face. Anyway, 
So what I'm gonna do is something you shouldn't do to real kittens. Can back up a little bit. I'm gonna track the motion of this object as it falls down. Now you can see the simulation is constantly redrawing dots. It's trying to get it hold on its position. So it's putting 20 dots on this cat uh, every second. So you can think of that as 20 frames per second or 20 dots per second, however you want to think about it. So we're going to track the motion and you'll see the little dots being left in the air. And so you should see 20 dots for each second. Um, it's not even going to take a second to go by. So we should just see a few dots on his path on the way down. Now this is not the per a perfect simulation. And it depends a lot on the um, how efficient my computer can work. So this might take a few tries. That's actually not a bad one. I want to see if I can get a better one for you guys, though. You have to be careful because it tracks things by color. And I guess the color of my skin is a little bit pink, and sometimes it mistakes me for the cat. OK, so you see how the dots at the top are clustered, and at the bottom, there's a little more spaced out. Now I was trying to track the logo on my shirt, see if we can get a better one. And then I'll real quick, if we can get a good one, I'll walk, walk up to the computer real quick. A little bit better. OK, that's probably as good as we're going to get. Oh, and it's, it's, tracking my, it's tracking me again. Should have got a different color toy. OK, so you can see that as it goes, goes down, the dots are more and more spaced out. That means as velocity is increasing as it goes down toward the ground. So like I said in the previous simulation, as anything falls in our gravitational field, the velocity increases, which means it accelerates to the ground. That's what acceleration means. Acceleration is a change in velocity. It means this velocity changes uh, over time. That's probably as good as I'm gonna get it there. So um, I'll leave the link to this. Uh, simulation I'm trying to see where it's, where it's trying to track here <laughs> i'll leave the link to this simulation in the description as well um and just follow the agenda as follow my mouth just follow today's agenda uh for all of your assignments if you have any questions i'll be around you can contact me i'll see you guys later